into the East Alabama Works video podcast. I'm Carl Brady, the uh, uh, workforce uh, program manager for East Alabama Works. We are uh, representing e Region 2 in East Alabama, the Alabama Workforce Council. And uh, we have a special guest joining us today from Gadsden State Community College, the workforce dean there, Mr. Alan Smith. Alan, welcome into our video podcast. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Carl. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate you having me. We're going to talk a lot about uh, all things Gadsden State today and how Gadsden State has been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and uh, what, uh, what you guys are looking forward to doing uh, in the future as we start our recovery process uh, from the pandemic. So a lot of different things to talk about today, but one of the really main things we'll talk about is going to be uh, technical education as the workforce dean and of course that's what we focus on with East Alabama Works is technical education but uh, just give us a quick overview of uh, leading up to right now you guys had to shut down classes shut down yes. skills training um, how did how did you handle that what what was the process that uh, that's happened over the last couple of months well, uh, on March the 16th we uh, transitioned away from on campus instruction and began the next day on March the 17th with totally online instruction. Uh, we had planned uh, and made some contingency plans about um, the coronavirus uh, back in early February and were monitoring and uh, Chancellor's Directive came down uh, from the Alabama Community College system that we were going to uh, leave campus on March the 17th and begin online instruction. Uh, for a time. And so we had uh, all of our instructors uh, prior to spring break at that time put in a lot of hard work and uh, put all their classes online. We had uh, quite a bit of hands-on instruction built into our classes up until that time and uh, we converted to online instruction and we were planning on doing that uh, for a while but as we know uh, things uh, progressed with COVID-19 and our governor uh, came with the stay at home order. So uh, our ACCS chancellor followed with a directive for all community colleges throughout the state uh, to continue with online instruction uh, through the rest of the spring semester. So that's where we've been. Uh, our instructors have done a phenomenal job. Our students have done a excellent job as well responding to this. Uh, you know, you look for silver linings in things. Uh, our normal way of operations was disrupted, um, but we've had a lot of uh, quality instruction stem from this that, you know, we probably wouldn't have had otherwise. We were thrown into the fire, more or less, and uh, we've done well. And it's, it's been a lot of hard work uh, with our instructors and from our leadership all across our college. Um, and uh, we've been really involved. Dr. Lavender has been very uh, proactive in uh, planning for the different uh, scenarios uh, and that's made this transition as smooth as it uh, could be. Moving forward into the spring, uh, excuse me, from the spring semester on into the summer semester, uh, our plans at Gadsden State are to have all the instruction during our mini one term, which is during the month of May, to be completely online. And those and that's what's will, going on right now. That's, that's happening yes, as we speak. Those classes start Friday. Okay. That is correct. And so they will be online and there will be no uh, you know, on-campus instruction of those at all. Beginning June the 8th, however, we are uh, putting our full summer term on in a hybrid format. And as we look to hear more uh, direction from our leaders in our state uh, on May the 15th. Uh, we will uh, you know, keep revising our plans if needed, but right now our plan is to uh, be with a hybrid class format with all our career technical education classes and uh, front load our theory portion uh, during the month of June and return uh, during July and our summer three uh, term with our hands-on uh, instruction. And when we do that, uh, we expect to be uh, practicing, you know, all measures of appropriate social distancing and uh, wearing masks. And we've 
uh, are looking at, and I've got some plans uh, from some of my instructors, and I've put in some thought into some others how we can uh, spread out the students uh, in the labs and how we can rotate schedules uh, so that we can, you know, ensure that everyone uh, comes and returns to campus and, and stays healthy. Our college is also doing a very extensive uh, sanitization process where uh, we have a special training and uh, there's been uh, equipment uh, purchased to uh, go in and sanitize every uh, square foot of our uh, campus and our buildings and that that is going on or will begin um, next week and that will continue uh, through uh, the latter part of May so uh, once those buildings are clean uh, we won't, uh, you know, allow people uh, to be in them to compromise or expose them. So there's been quite a bit of time we've been vacant from campus, but just in case uh, there was any, you know, thing that could be uh, a threat to anybody's health or well-being, uh, we're scrubbing everything up and, and following all of the uh, proper guidelines uh, from the CDC and the government as well about how to clean our college. So uh, even though you guys haven't been on campus, uh, still a lot of work going on behind the scenes and and uh, figuring out yes. how, to, how to make this stuff work and uh, how to how to how to get your classes to your students so that they can continue in their education as uninterrupted as possible. Yes, there was a massive displacement um, from uh, March the thirteenth, uh, which was the first day that uh, Governor Kay Ivey came out and announced that, that something would be done. And uh, Eric Mackey, Dr. Mackey came out with the State Department of Education uh, with that uh, uh, news as well. And uh, mm -hmm. Chancellor Baker had already uh, sent directives out for the community college system to do those things. But there was a massive disruption uh, in most people's lives across the state, whether they be college students. And, and many of our students our parents and many of our students are older and, and we had, uh, you know, some, uh, a lot of anxiety during that time. And we also had instructors that were uh, learning or, or converting and putting things online that, let, you know, with our area and region too, many of our students come from and instructors live in rural areas. Not everyone had readily uh, available internet access, access and not everyone had the, devices that they've needed. So there was a time period and, and thankfully for us, the timing, we did have a, a little bit of uh, adjustment built in because uh, three days into our online learning process, we began spring break. So instructors had time to uh, think about how they were going to go about it. And we made every possible effort, whether it was uh, reaching out through our online uh, platform that we uh, use to teach our students, uh, our, our emails, phone calls, text. I know our instructors did everything they could to reach our students and ensure that they, are, they uh, were safe. Um, our college also uh, did a great job of uh, making uh, online uh, education uh, go smoothly uh, by providing a Wi-Fi hotspots in our parking lots. Mm -hmm. So students and some instructors would take advantage of that, uh, come, would come to campus and park in the parking lots. And uh, if you were a Gadsden State student, you know, you were sent a Wi-Fi password and the parking lots would stay open uh, until a certain time of the evening and then they would be, the Wi-Fi would go down for security purposes and everything. So mm -hmm. we had a, you know, a, an adjustment there. We also saw an adjustment in how to teach online. Some of our instructors who right. had experience with teaching online uh, were a little ahead of the curve, uh, but they had taught, you know, many of our instructors had online experience, but not to the extent of which they've been put in in this semester. Uh, so there had been a little, uh, you know, learning curve about uh, teaching online. And, you know, in this time of, quarantine and people being home and, and working from home, I think we all can, that oh, those of us that work for home know that uh, the work goes on and the work uh, continues and uh, many times it's uh, longer hours in the day uh, because of your accessibility. 
and that's uh, our instructors uh, know that, and many of them express have expressed to me. You know, at school, I'm uh, at, at college. Uh, you know, I'm required to be there from 7 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. At, in the daytime, and I, I, you know, speaking to me as the dean of workforce development, they said, you know, I'm I'm doing my job, but I also get a lot of phone calls or, or a lot of communications, emails, and that sort of thing from students at night. And I've encouraged our instructors to have flexible hours, be understanding, you know, students, uh, if, you know, we've got some students that may have part-time jobs or full-time jobs as essential workers trying to carry on with their education and raise their students. And we just have to make our best effort to be accessible to our students and uh, give them the quality education that they deserve. Um, what, we what all... Kind of Go ahead. Well, what kind of adjustments did you guys have to make in the technical uh, fields? Because, you know, it's, it's hard to teach construction or welding without hands-on instruction. You, gotta, you have to be there. You got to get your hands on the, uh, the, the materials. And uh, how, how did you make that, uh, that adjustment uh, quickly? Yes. Well, we were, I'm thankful. Uh, to the Lord that we were uh, ahead of the curve with our hands-on instruction for those programs that you just mentioned. Uh, we were almost 60% complete with the uh, semester uh, prior to dismissal and our instructors in welding and in construction technology, uh, they're very heavy uh, in the spring terms. Uh, the classes they had uh, are very heavy on the hands-on uh, part. Um, they typically, the theory part of the class, uh, they typically teach it uh, in conjunction with the labs, but the labs were front loaded in this term for the most part. So uh, we've had uh, quite a bit of um, uh, hands on lab time. Uh, we looked at the hours and the minutes uh, that we'd had. And so we did have some that uh, uh, felt like we were in a good place there to move into the theory portion uh, as well. But we also have provisions for those students who don't have uh, or didn't get the adequate training. And, and we also know that there will be some incompletes uh, in those classes uh, moving forward where uh, students will make up uh, that work once we return to campus. So we they have, will have uh, an opportunity to make up anything that they missed because of this COVID-19. Right, and the instructors have, uh, and I've spoke with uh, our instructors, and uh, they have um, a competency-based, performance-based type evaluation uh, for the classes that, you know, once we come back, because we want to make sure that everybody uh, gets the instruction that they need and the instruction that they are, uh, you know, paying for or, or getting awarded, you know, during this time and we get the adequate instruction. So we're going to make sure that when we do get back to campus, uh, if there's any of the students that uh, didn't get the proper evaluation, competency-based, performance-based evaluation, we can keep track of those and get those students back on track without penalizing them for uh, this. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between us, the, the, the traditional technical education that is, uh, you, know, you, you can do a short-term certificate program, you can do a full degree program, you're getting, you're earning credit hours while you're in these programs, and then the skills training part of things where they're, they're uh, non-credit programs, but they, they're, then they are short-term like CDL and CNA and some things like that. Now, Things were a little different in that program yes. because some of those did have to shut down shy of finishing their classes, but there's a plan for that as well. Yes, and our CDL program is a, a good example. We uh, have uh, quite a bit of interest in our CDL program. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some uh, great instructors and we have two trucks and in six weeks someone can uh, get a CDL a commercial driver's license and be ready to go. Uh, unfortunately, we had four students uh, in the program that were just days away from having their uh, testing require, having their the enough uh, time in the class, and uh, they were waiting to take the test. 
the testing facilities closed down and they didn't have enough hours to complete. So when they come back, we're, when we're allowed to come back, we will uh, pick up with them where we left off. And we also uh, have reached out to uh, another community college uh, because the situ we have a unique situation when we come back, another instructor that's uh, certified to give the state test will have to test them. And we have an agreement uh, with through this we've networked throughout the, the time of doing uh, online meetings and meetings with different platforms. We've you know, networked with some other colleges and, and they're going to work with us to help our students. So that's a, a really good thing moving forward. We'll be able to uh, bring those classes back uh, when we can. And, and with our CDL program, uh, you know, we, we're not going to violate anybody's or any safety laws or regulations, but we anticipate uh, going back possibly uh, with mask on uh, with an instructor and a student, you know, in the practicing inside the cab of the truck and keeping the air uh, circulating. Uh, some institutions have looked at doing some uh, plexiglass in the cab to provide safety. And we're looking at those measures as well. Also with the skills training, we do have a CNA program and um, many of our students when they go through the CNA program, they leave and get employment uh, inside the nursing home industry. And they were, the, as you know, were probably among the first uh, to close their doors to outside visitors. So uh, those students that were getting training and, and going in for their internships and that sort of thing uh, within the uh, nursing home, they were not able to continue with that. But as soon as we're allowed to get back in that, and we're trying to get ahead of the curve so uh, we can do anything that we can online. We've uh, done a little bit of pre-trip and testing, uh, pre-trip inspection testing with our CDLs. Uh, we're putting that uh, online to our students and some of the classroom instruction parts of our CNA program uh, we're putting online as well. Uh, when we come back, I anticipate to see uh, you know, some people uh, interested in CDLs, you know, that was an, assist, an essential job. Uh, yeah, I think we all saw, you know, when many people were staying home, our healthcare workers were, were employed and our, and our people that do our transportation in this nation were moving, you know, freight all, all across America and our state. And I'm thankful uh, that we have that supply chain. I'm glad that, you know, Gadsden State, we can train workers in that industry. So you, you, you've got a plan moving forward and how things are going to work. Now we need to get uh, students in those programs. And it's a good opportunity. You know, you were talking earlier about finding the silver lining. And the silver lining for a lot of folks who may be losing their jobs or getting laid off, uh, uh, maybe a former Goodyear employee, there are opportunities here for you to take advantage of this time that you're laid off or, or your job has gone away to retrain into something else, uh, learn a new skill, learn a new trade, you know, do that thing that you've always said you've wanted to do, but you didn't have time to do. And the unique thing about technical training at a community college is there are so many ways that you can have that education paid for so that it doesn't cost you a dime. And that's, that's one of the great things about education at a community college. So talk about that a little bit. There, there are things like the Trade Adjustment Act. There's a Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Relationships throughout the community with East Alabama Works, with the Career Center System. All of these relationships that work together to help students to pay for these education programs with, without any cost out of their own pocket. Well, it is just amazing the amounts of opportunities that are there for someone that wants to come back to school. Um, you mentioned uh, the uh, Trade Adjustment Act, or it used to be called the Trade Realignment Act. Uh, we have in Region 2 uh, plant uh, in Gadsden that has been in operations for over 90 years that's uh, leaving and going away. And we reached out to the employees of Goodyear uh, at that plant uh, back in December when uh, nearly 800 or so uh, were 
uh, let go and permanently and we had some enrollment from that and those uh, because of the way those workers were dismissed their college could be paid for through the TAA benefits and uh, now that the plant has closed and there's uh, near, around 350 to 400 uh, employees that are going to be uh, losing their jobs uh, those benefits will apply and they can come as well I, you know even all around our region there may be some adjustment in the capacity of our workforce mm -hmm. and uh, with the cares act and some of the things that the government is doing uh, now there may be some more money but the uh, wioa funds are readily available for uh, students and many of our students take advantage of that and, and many students uh, that might consider themselves uh, non-traditional uh, because they may be older or restarting a career. We have many students uh, in our programs that are uh, in that category and it's a great place to learn uh, any type of career whether uh, you know you want to be in welding or we have uh, you know wonderful uh, precision machining and, and in our transportation department, you can be uh, in uh, automotive technology or auto body repair or uh, work on diesel engines. I mean, Gadsden State really has a lot to offer. We have uh, good uh, programs in engineering and design and civil engineering as well. And we also have a program where you can learn how to be a court reporter. And uh, I don't want to leave anybody out, electronics, engineering, uh, we've got, you know, that as well as our electrical and our, um, our industrial maintenance fields. So we just have uh, wonderful opportunities in our career tech world for people to get credit. Uh, we have adult education courses where if you're leaving and, and maybe you didn't finish up high school, we can get you a GED and from the GED, we can transition a student on into the credit side. Uh, so there's just you can start at Gadsden State, whether it's in a, a CDL program uh, or a CNA program in six weeks, you know, you can have a, a skill or a move on in to get an applied associate uh, science degree. And you can, uh, you know, in two years, you can have, you know, one of the best paying jobs in the technical field out there. We've got uh, great instructors and great resources. That's just in our side. We also have, you know, wonderful, uh, health science program and and many people may be looking to uh, go into uh, not only of a, a career tech field but go into that as well and we also think that maybe you know the four-year colleges as things change for them maybe we people might want to take advantage of us at Gaston State with our online learning there as well so we we are truly for the community and region two and, and definitely my role as uh, Dean of Workforce Development, I focus 100% on that, but there's a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, training at Gadsden State, and the financial burden is not uh, always just on the student. There's a lot of ways that you right. can take advantage of these opportunities. Yeah, grants, scholarships, uh, all kinds of things yes. that are available out there. We if have you, a great. You have to ask the right questions, and you have to do to students who who are even non traditional students, uh, maybe you know forty forty five years old. They lost their job. They're going to come back. Do they have to go do that FAFSA process that's under that's yep. underway right now? Do they need to do start there like everybody else? Yes, and I, I just, the, everything you know goes through the one stop center, and we have a wonderful uh, team at the One Stop Center that works through enrollment services and they can assist you online. Uh, everything is, has been very seamless and all of the financial aid has been done online. We've got a, a just great personnel in the financial aid department and, and uh, with getting people started. And uh, you know, I tell a student, be persistent, it's your education and it's your uh, life, but we've got people that are willing to help and uh, you know, all you have to do is make that effort and move forward. And uh, that's, that's the place to begin. You're right. 
right? Begin there with the university or with the school in order to, 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 uh, uh, to, to get signed up and signed in and find out about some financial aid there. Mm -hmm. And then also, especially with the training, uh, technical training programs, you're going to want to connect with the Alabama Career Center office in your community. And that's where you're going to find out about uh, Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act uh, funding. Uh, and money that's available there, grants that are available there for technical education. They're going to help you out there and, and put you in a program that works for you uh, for that, to, to, to have your schooling paid for. And so, so there's just a lot of different things and, uh, that you need to be doing and thinking about right now because you've got to get registered. You've got to get, especially if you want to get in those summer, time, summer term programs, you, you need to go ahead and be starting that process now so that you can get registered in time, right? That's right. And the, the enrollment can be done online and there's, uh, you know, plenty of time uh, to do that, but you need to do it, you know, act now. You don't need to wait too late, but it's, it's not too late to sign up for that term uh, that begins on June the 8th and uh, moving forward with that. And uh, it's, a, it's a great time to start. And our instructors also are very beneficial in advising students that come into their programs as well. And uh, we just, we've got at Gadsden State, uh, our instructors across the board are extremely dedicated to the success of their students. And they go above and beyond many times to ensure students' success because yeah. uh, as a career tech or as a technical education, uh, instructors and as a technical education professional, we know that many times, you know, we're changing uh, a person's livelihood. We're changing the, the outcome and the future of families. And it's a, it's a really a wonderful uh, thing to be able to help someone do that. And, you know, I look back in my uh, background, there was a career tech educator that helped me uh, when I was young. And I think all of our instructors, myself and our instructors across the board have that same, uh, mission uh, to help our students uh, move forward. Let's talk uh, before we go about the Ready to Work program. That's something that has transitioned online. Uh, you hear a lot of us in the workforce development uh, area and with uh, the regional offices uh, talk about ready to work programs and, and you guys have been able to transition that to, to an online program. So that's available right now for folks who want to take advantage of that. So talk a little bit about ready to work quickly. Well, ready to work is, you know, you mentioned the career centers and that's a good place to start uh, with that. And we're through our adult education program. Uh, they're going to be doing the online uh, part of the ready to work uh, program so that uh, as you know, people that are uh, looking to, uh, build and have those employable uh, office career skills or, um, you know, skills of essential employment that prove to the employer, you know, that they are able to do these things that all good employers are looking for, mm -hmm. then they can do that. And we have not done that in an online platform, but we are uh, beginning that now. And that's coming through our adult ed uh, program and, uh, going in with the skills training program. It's it, on the non, what we call the non-credit uh, side of our training, but uh, there'll be plenty of uh, good credentials for students to earn, to present to uh, employers, you know, all out there. And you can find out more about that at the career centers. Uh, and you can look at about, or look up the ready to work curriculum online. Absolutely. And the best way to find out more information about any of the stuff that we've talked about today is to go to the Gadsden State website, gadsdenstate.edu. And, uh, you know, just go to the menus across the top, find technical education uh, program information. Um, you guys have somewhere around 19 or 20 different technical education programs. Then you've got health sciences. You've got multiple campuses where these programs are being offered. So anywhere in region two is pretty well 
it can it can be close to a Gadsden State campus, whether it be in Anniston, in Cherokee County, or in Gadsden. So you know these programs are offered at multiple locations in many cases. So it's uh, it's pretty convenient to to get your education with Gadsden State as well. It is, and we offer some uh, flexible flexibility in many of our programs. Uh, classes in the daytime and classes at night as well. So we try to make every effort to uh, train, you know, be accessible to provide training for, you know, anyone interested uh, in pursuing their education and bettering uh, their career opportunities in Region 2. We um, do all that we can and, and are continually looking for new and innovative ways to do more. Absolutely. And again, the website for Gadsden State is gadstonstate.edu. So you can go there as a great starting place to find out more information about schedules, registration, what kind of classes you might be interested in, to learn more about the different classes. All of that information is available there at gadstonstate.edu. Alan, I want to say a big thank you for joining us, taking a little time out of your day today to talk about your programs and your technical programs there. And we want to encourage as many people as possible to take advantage of these technical programs and learn a new skill, learn a new trade, get into a new career. Most of these technical uh, careers are, uh, are very good paying, uh, family sustaining careers nowadays. Uh, you know, for a while there, technical trades kind of were getting a, getting a, a, a little bit of a bad rep, but now you look at it with, you know, plumbing, electrical, HVAC, welding, carpentry, all of those kind of things, truck driving. Those are some very nice jobs to have and a good career. And the best place to start for that is Gaston State. So, uh, Alan, Carl, thank you. We appreciate, we appreciate you having us on here. And you're right, the, the technical education uh, field is so wide open. And, you know, with the advanced manufacturing curriculums that we have, uh, where you can, you know, be ready to go to work and on robots and, and do all the things out there. It, it is definitely a new world in career tech education. We appreciate you and appreciate everything that East Alabama Works does to help us promote uh, our uh, college and everything that we can do to promote the workforce in Region 2, the development of that. We thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. And again, thank you folks for joining us for our East Alabama Works video podcast. Remember to check out our website, eastalabamaworks.com. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.